I remember my teacher said, "There's no crying in karate." Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode four hundred fifty-six. Today, my guest is Shihan Ninja Win. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here from Martial Arts Radio, founder of Whistlekick and a guy who loves martial arts. And that's why I do all the things that I do. And that's why we here at Whistlekick do what we do. If you want to see everything that we've got going on, go to whistlekick.com. One of the things you'll see there is our store. You pop in there, you'll see some apparel, protective equipment, uniforms, whole bunch of stuff. And if you use the code podcast 15, that'll save you 15% off every single thing in there. If you want to find more out about this show, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From either site, you can sign up for the newsletter, and that'll keep you spun up on everything that we've got going on. Because we do a lot more than this show, which we do twice a week. It's all for free, and all with the goal of connecting, educating, and inspiring traditional martial artists the world over. Shihan Wynn comes to us today to talk about a scattered path. But it seems pretty clear to me that early on, the tone was set by martial arts. The trajectory was set with martial arts. We talk about the ups, the downs, and everything in between. So let's do it. Shihan Wen, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. Good. First, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. And uh, I listen to your show all the time, so it's an, an honor to be on your show. Well, I'm always honored when I get the opportunity to speak to someone who listens to the show, because as, I, as I've said many times in the past, if no one was listening, I would just be a crazy guy with a microphone <laughs> talking to himself uh, or, or maybe to one other person. But it's, uh, it's been quite the ride and, and getting to, to meet and, and talk to people who listen to the show. It's just it's it's crazy. But, you know, we're not we're not here to talk about me as as much as that would be easy to do. We're here to talk about you. This is about your journey, your story as a martial artist. So let's start in the most white belt of ways. How did you find the martial arts? So when I was first uh, discovered martial art was, I was like four years old in Vietnam. And my dad, he was basically a, was a fisherman. And he was trying to smoke my brother out during the uh, Vietnam War. So what happened was, as a young child, for me, I was basically asking a question, how come today I see my brother? And then the next day, next couple of days, I don't see my brother. So where did he go? So my dad is, was um, trying to keep me busy in some way that so I don't ask the questions. So what happened, he put me into Vietnamese martial arts. So at that time, you know, when I was discovered martial arts, it was basically training for better health, better focus, and better discipline. That was it. And at that time, we didn't discover a belt or anything like that because we came in, in as, a, as a poor person. you come coming in just a regular uniform, and that, that was it. Um, and there is no mat. There is no rug. There is just concrete in somebody's backyard. So that was how I discovered the martial arts. And... and you know, during that time, it was uh, fun because every day you learn new things and then you challenge yourself by understand and working on more, um, what I call at that time was a young child, more uh, listen and focus, put it that way. And then, you know, continue my training martial art to, um, to that until 1978. And then I was coming, basically uh, left Vietnam to go to escape to America. And then that, that journey I was in, basically, and up in the camp, is a uh, Malaysian camp for six months. And uh, at that time, same thing in the camp was basically everyone that a refugee. And all, every single day we do is we go to class, we go to church, and then we go into basically a group of person that, teaching a martial art in the camp. That was it. And then throughout that six months, and then they brought me to another camp in the Philippines. And that's when I discovered was learning the, uh, another martial arts. But at that time, it was like, I would say about 10, 10 years old, nine, nine, 10 years old, you know, stay there for another year. 
and then I came to uh, United States, 1980. So at that time, I come over here, basically kind of like uh, a kid, Vietnamese kid, don't speak any English, going to school, and basically don't understand the language. So at that time, I was basically every single day I go to school and I pass by the martial art gym. At that time, there was a Shotokan gym. And as you know, when you train Shotokan, um, I think they still do now, but at back then, the teacher was speak Japanese, so everything you learn is punch, kicks in Japanese. And when I go to school to learn English, I ask myself, you know, I'm already struggling English already. Now I'm going to learn Japanese, learn how to punch and kick in Japanese. And then, so I didn't go to that school. I went to another school. Uh, it was an American guy who teach, and then they, they teach basically at the punch, the kicks, and I'm familiar with the, the sport. And I put two and two together. That's how I actually perfect learning English throughout my, my uh, school years. So because of that, I, I fell in love with even more because each day I can't wait to finish my day school and then go straight to the karate school because I can learn English and I spend all my time over there. So throughout that, I basically have a, a, a rank, but... Because at back then, when you have a, a one sport of uh, karate, you have a belt, you go to another system, you have to restart again. And so because of that, I restart as a white belt, same thing. And then I go, I start training. And then throughout that, I started to compete. But at, back then, was point fighting was always point fighting. There's, there's no full contact, anything like that. But I love the sport because it helped me speaking English, learning the language, and then I can learn to have more fun, basically. So that's how I was kind of like discovered the martial arts. Now, one of the things that you didn't bring up that, you know, I remember from the early 80s was that there weren't a lot of children training. No, no. So I imagine that you're in this school, one of, if not the only kids? So Training. we was in there, it was the instructor and two of their, his kid. And then, and then at that time, it was like a mixed class. Uh, what I mean mixed class is you have the adult and kid together. But of course, like the kid, when you line up, you, don't, you can't line up with the adult is. And the class at that time, it was like the, the fundamental is basically you're coming in, you learn, you do the warm up stretching, and then you do drill and all the time we do is just punching in the air, kick in the air, punch in the air. But at that time, it, it was like, um, I feel like at that time, it was like, wasn't a lot of kid into martial arts, really. You know, it's like a lot of adult for sure. Mm. And, and, you know, because of that, I don't really, um, what do you call it? I grown to be more like the, find more to the adult, I would say. You know, because at that time, I already know, like, how to kick and punch. So for me to kind of fit in, it was kind of uh, easy, you know. And then because then I fell in love with the language, because all I want to do is just learn the language. Right. It, it, it's got to be an interesting time. You know, and I, I'm, I'm a little younger than you, but I, you know, I started in the early 80s. And I just, I remember the martial arts climate there. And I know how hard it was as a kid coming up in traditional martial arts. But. I didn't have these added barriers of language and, and coming from a different country. I think for me, for me, yeah, it, go ahead. for me, it was more fun because like, you know, I, I, I remember the first time when I went to school, uh, to the English school was, uh, I discovered I got a detention really fast because one of the kids teaching me how to say hi by giving a middle finger. So I got detentions knowing that, you know, I didn't learn the language. So because of that, I fell in love with the, the language because I'm like, well, the only place that I can learn to kind of put uh, the meaning in together. Because when you throw a punch, that's very simple. It's like, you know, my language and then the, uh, they, they can call out punch. And because of that, I kind of understand the meaning. So because of that, you know, I, I basically like every day when I get out of school, that's all I've been. Just go there, finish my homework while I'm doing my homework, watching the class while they speak. 
you know, and and uh, and because of like the sport, everybody was very helpful. You know, I didn't understand. I remember I didn't understand. I was doing the um, English uh, project, and I was basically trying to put a uh, now and verb together, and it was somebody there who was actually happened to be a teacher, and she helped me out. So it was kind of uh, fun for me. But at the same time, I remember the martial art back then was very strict because you can't you can't laugh in the class, you can't joke around, you can't you know. And there's uh, I remember my teacher said there's no crying in karate, you know. And and I thought it was and when I went home, my my dad, I told my dad he's like yeah, karate is supposed to be martial art supposed to be very disciplined, you know. So, but you know and and. Because of that, I trained uh, each day, every single day I was training, go to school, come back home, that, that all I was. And, and I was so excited to just be in, in a group. And then at that time, they went to a tournament. I went and watched, and I fell in love with it. You know, so because of the martial art, it's changed my life. But at the same time, it's kind of uh, give me some, I would say, insight and think I was the, the, the baddest person in the class, you know? So, so I thought it was uh, fun. The, the, the journey of the martial art was fun. So, and I remember, what is it? 1987, I opened my first martial art gym when I went uh, graduate high school. And, you know, I was like, I have 500 bucks in my, my, my name. And I opened a school back then, the rent was cheap. And I didn't even remember that, you know, I know from the fact that I didn't even have insurance back then. And I, I opened a school and I, I, I remember it was like uh, a challenging, uh, not a lot of students, but at the same time, it was like basically I just jumped and did it. And because of that, all I did was every single day was learning sport and train the student. And the student get good. I spar with them. And the whole thing was, I opened the, the, the at that time, I opened the, the dojo because the benefit of me. So in other words, I hope to get a lot of students. So by that way, I can train them. I can spar on them so I can get better. They can get better. But the reality was all about me. So, you know, I did that for two years and then I have to close up because, you know, my dad said to me, he said, when you open the dojo, you open a, a martial art gym, you're supposed to teach a student. You're supposed to be there, empower them, not for your need. So because of that, my dad asked me to, to close up. And I, I remember coming in, closing the door, and, and half of my student was like just couldn't even look at me because of how I was. And I told him that's what happened. And so it was heartbroken for me, but at the same time, the experience for me learning that you have to be honest with yourself. Your, your father seems like he's been a pretty powerful influence. What was his relationship to martial arts? He, back then, he was in the military, and he was training martial arts, but he wasn't like really active in it. Because at that time, when he, uh, he was mostly... He was trained, but mostly he was focused trying to bring the uh, family to the freedom, you know, to America. So when he came over here, same thing that he had was very disciplined. He trained at home. He trained the martial art with my brother and everyone in my family. But at the same time, it was one of those things that family come first, that you, no matter what your need is, you have to forget that. So I kind of, in a way that did not like the way that was coming. So because of that, I actually lost myself into uh, a different life. So when I closed the school, I was basically kind of like, instead of go train every single day, I start to basically start to hang out at the club, work at the club, become a bouncer at the club, and then hang out with those bad people. So at the same time, it's one of those things that as a martial art teaching me is that when you want something or you determine something or when somebody tells you you can't get it, you're going to want to get it. And because of that, I fell in, in to the, the, the other side of 
a good person become uh, uh, kind of like a, a time bomb person. It's like, uh, I'm badass. You can't get in, you know, my way and, you know, nobody can talk crap to me. Kind of like, uh, like that. And I basically become that life, fell into that life for about 20 years. It wasn't that long ago that you stepped out of that then, if I'm doing the math right. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, how, after that, what I... What prompted that? How, how did you get out? Uh, always, and it's kind of funny uh, saying this, but, you know, always for me was my wife. When, she, when she, she was with me and she said to me, she said, I don't care what type of person you are, I want to be with you. And the type... The way how she does is that every single day she don't tell you, hey, you can't do that. But she do things to kind of empower you to make sure looking at the right, the, the bright side, you know. Mm-hmm. And because of that, and then, you know, she challenged me to basically change my life by, she said to me, she said, I would challenge you to basically left what you have and just leave. And so when I left, when I left Boston to went to California and Arizona, I ended up in Arizona. I stay over there. And, you know, when I, I believe that when you, when you try to make money and when you make in a fast run, okay, or you get the money really fast, no matter what, it will, it will get away from you by, that mean that the faster you make the money, the easy it's going away by your passion, not into it, your greeting or uh, greedy. So when my life started to change was 2006. I basically, 2006, 2007, I've been invest all my money into a couple of small business in the house. In 2007, everything was basically, the house market would drop. I lost everything. And at that time, it was one person came into my life, was my daughter. And when I see her face, I could not say anything beside love, compassion, determined, leadership, you know. So, and I asked myself, I said, I can't look at this kid and knowing that I cannot, and especially a girl, I cannot have teach this girl that I was a punk. I was in integrity with myself. I wasn't, you know, being a, a, a great person to raise this baby. So because of that, I, my wife basically, she said to me, she said, um, let, I'm, I want to, us to go back with my dad. And I said, no, I want to go back in Boston to rebuild myself, to redeem myself. And she said to me, she said, no matter where you go, you're going to start the same thing. You will be the same person you are. And I said to her, I said, a person cannot change only if he can change himself before the environment. So when I came here, I basically, I came back. I, I helped one of my uh, old friend and student to run his school. So basically six months, I would be at his school, help him and then build his school. And then one day he said to me, he said, I would love to give you this key so you can have your own dojo. And my life was turned after that. And uh, it was brought my family together. My wife and I, we, we united together. And then after that was now 10 years, you know, and then I wrote a book last year about step on the mat, about my life and, and the, the martial arts. And, you know, so I, I always believe that to me, I always believe that no matter what you do, family, you know, fate, whatever the fate is, you got to believe in that. And then, you know, families come second and then third financial. And I think like to build, I built my business out of love for my own family, you know, and I believe that people, including myself, we want, we all want love. We want integrity. We want honesty. We want, you know, all that I crave for just like everybody else. And because of that, my business was very success even now. And, you know, and I think like every single day, there's always a testing curve to make sure that you are integrity with your character and be true who, uh, truly who you are. 
And because of that, I believe that that's why my community grow. And, and you know, and, and that's why I love and I, I love to share about, and I want everybody to understand it's like when you train martial art, when you step on the mat, it's about friendship, about community, about love, about compassion, honesty, like we talk about as a martial art. Because that back then, I remember my teacher always said to me, no matter where you are, you have to show who your character is. Truly who you are and the martial art or in your life will grow. And, and you know, that's why I want to share. And, and I love uh, the way um, your, your station brought so much about martial art. And to me, I feel the same way as I love martial art so much. And it's like, I sleep, I eat, I talk about martial art. I train martial art. I do every single day. And, and the better, the better, I use martial art to better my health, my mind, my body, and my, my family. Because, you know, like a like, uh, month and a half ago, I have suddenly out of nowhere, I have a seizure. And it makes me realize even more now ever is that no matter what you do, you got to keep your body healthy. You got to keep your mind healthy and you got to share with the community. It's almost like if you see a movie that is so good, why don't you want to share with the community? So tell us what's different about the way you're training and teaching now versus 20 something years ago. So back then when I was training back then, it was like either you do it. Okay. Suck it up and do it. There is no giving up. Okay. Now I feel that the society now this day is that you cannot say to a, a person like that because if you say somebody like that, you hurt their feeling and they want to sue you, they you know. So now I teach more like uh, empower the person and you find a way to empower the kid, you challenge them and but you want them to do with the passion. You give them the opportunity. So, for example, I have kids that have, um, I don't want to say autism, you know, or, or, or special needed. I always think of those person as just like me. It's just the way for me to communicate with them. I have to find way to connect with them. And, you know, and uh, for example, I have kids uh, taking class. Let's say they're doing a front row. And they said they can't do it. I said to them, I said, but what if I give you 20 bucks, would you be able to do it? And they know how to do it. Because the, the things that now I have to see is I have to show them what's, um, what purpose, why they're doing it. Because you, it, most of them, when you ask them to do push-up, they're like, oh my God, it's too much. But I said to them, I said, think about a push-up. If you do push-up, the purpose is to get your body stronger you get your mind stronger, your body stronger, and it's fun to do a lot of push-up. And they got, oh, okay, I got it. Then they do it. So it's a little bit different now. And I feel like every single, this, this year, even this year, everyone to empower someone or everyone want to be um, a motivation, you know? So it's like you have to find different way and then you can't tell them or you can't do it. Because if you tell, if you give them a, a exit, say you can't do it, then they say, you know, I can't do it. But if you give them an opportunity, say, well, you know what? Let me challenge you if you can do one. How about I'll do with you? And, you know, as an in, instructor, I feel now is that when you do things with them, they love it. And I tell them, I said, it's okay to struggle because I still struggle. There's certain movement I still struggle, but it's okay because the whole thing is about the journey. That's it. That's quite the contrast, quite the difference. And I'm curious, how do you feel teaching now versus then? Uh, I, love, I love teaching because I feel like I'm not teaching really. Uh, I feel like I more facilitate the class, you know, because I feel like as a, as a, as a teacher, when you say a teacher, uh, I feel like sometimes people caught into a, a title, like a sensei, shihan. And for me, I feel like everybody can throw a punch and a kick. 
it's just a, 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 a great one. It takes a lot of uh, repetitions. So I tell the kid all the time, I, I would say to them, or even adult, I said, look, when you throw a punch, feel the connection with your body. And I tell them, I said, like, think of like your body, if you never move before, almost like a, uh, when I joke in the class, I almost like, it's like a long distance relationship that you haven't seen for a while. And then when you see it, you feel it, it's uncomfortable sometimes. So, you know, training, you have to kind of like find way and empower them and then in fun way. Because I feel like now it's like, because they have so many sports coming out there, everybody's doing this, doing that. And almost like teaching them not so much commitment anymore, you know? And I feel like as a martial artist, you have to commit it yourself for you to take years to get black belt, you know? And I think now it's like, even now, I think it's easy for kids to kind of like come because they have so many sports that they want to do. And then for them, martial art is just a sport. And to me, I feel like martial art is not a sport. It's more like a, a, a mindset, a life skill, the, the, um, um, older, the older challenge that, that we done, for example, um, goal setting, you know, like for example, you, you, you set a goal to compete, let's say, to inform whatever that is, you know, and they all, and I tell them, it's like things that you do on the mat, you sparring, you find solution. Okay. You got kicks, you know why. And then you train to be better. And I feel like out of sport, they come with a team, you know. Uh, martial art, you come individual, you shine individual. Yes, we all in the family together. We cheer for each other. But when you spy, you spy on your own. You know, you may have a bunch of team, a uh, bunch of people around you, your brother, you know, everybody cheer for you. But when you lose, it's you. You have to do it. The, the sport, team sport, is like, hey, if we lose, oh, you know what? The whole team, you know, everybody else. So I feel like as a martial artist, it'll teach you all those skills that you raise as a child in life. And I know for me personally, because for me, getting out 18 years old, didn't, uh, didn't live in America, speak English that long, and I'd be able to open my first martial art gym. You know, and Marshall had taught me, teach me that. Mm. If you could go back, you know, and, and work with your 18 year old self, opening that first gym, what would you be saying? What would you be advising the younger you? I, I would say number one is to be honest with myself, uh, integrity with myself, knowing that I'm open the dojo to share the sport with other people, to make the sport grow, not for individual need you know and, and in some way at that time i was more like i'm using you so i can be better you know so it's all, almost like going opposite what martial was about so i think like uh, if i was going back to that i was saying you know be accountable and be a great character and integrity especially integrity and sincerity in myself it, it sounds like it's been quite the the growth curve from that until now. I can I can hear quite the difference. One of the hallmarks here on Martial Arts Radio is storytelling. Of course, we we hear the story of the guest, and then I'll often ask them to tell a story. I mean, you've been telling us stories since he came on. Stories of things that you've experienced. If I was to ask you for your your favorite story, you know, however you want to interpret that. What would be your favorite story from your time as a martial artist? Uh, I would say, you know, 1980, uh, the Kung Fu Theater was on, Bruce Lee was on, and, and I remember every single day waking up in the morning and eat breakfast and watch Kung Fu Theater and practice do push-up and throw a nunchuck watching Bruce Lee. So I thought that was really fun as, as a child growing up. And then, you know, and then many times after that was, you know, the, as you know, the, the, the 80 and the 90 was Ninja Turtle and all that. And I thought it was really fun growing up, knowing that I didn't really um, 
stuck in video game or, or uh, iPad or anything like that. You know, it's waking up the whole family watching movie together. So I feel like as as growing up now, it's not so much that family always eat and uh, breakfast together and hang out together and, and watch the same show. You know, so I, I thought it was that like the best story in growing up. You know, I have. Mm. We've talked a little bit about your father and that he didn't train formally, but how about other members of your family? Did anybody else yeah, my, train? Oh, well, my brother, they trained. Yeah, my brother was uh, Taekwondo's. They trained Taekwondo's. And, you know, and, and, and I think like when we get together, my brother and I, when we get together, we still train. But, you know, I feel like as the martial artist, for me, because I'm so act, active in it and I love it, and I always tell them, I was like, why don't you come back and train? But I feel like, you know, when they, for them, it's like, well, I'm older, you know, and I got to take care of my family. And I, and I said to them, I said, you know, I'm older, I'm taking care of my family, but at the same time, I'm still trained. So for them, it's like the mastrata, it's almost like a fade coming in. And then now I'm older now, so I don't need to work out really. So it, it's a little bit different. And I feel like that's why I feel like, the connection between like people training martial arts, they should keep it active no matter what, you know, so by that way they can be healthy for themselves. I agree. There's always something you can do. I don't care how old you are. If you can stand up, even if you can't, I know several martial artists who are restricted to wheelchairs. Right. If you can breathe, you can train. Right. And I, and I, you know, that's why I hope that everyone can take the opportunity to just, you know, practice because, you know, it's like if you can do one move and be healthy, why not? We haven't talked much about your instructors. I mean, we've talked a little bit about this Shotokan school. So my, so yeah. right, right now I have, I have basically, um, I have my first teacher was karate back then in Vietnam. His name was Hong. And then when I came to U.S., the guy that actually brought me in his dojo, it was um, this guy named Fed Backley. And he was open like a, American karate. And then at that time, and then my, my Japanese teacher, I went back to my Japanese teacher, was Master Euro. And, you know, and for a while, he was really great. He was, and then he went back to Japan. And that was it. We lost, I mean, I've been looking for him for a while now. And then, you know, so my American Kempo Karate was, uh, you probably heard of his name was Rocky Rico. Of course, he's been on the show. Yeah. So, you know, so I've been with him and then I've been right now, I've been training basically. I went to Thailand and trained Muay Thai. And then, you know, I came back and then uh, I met my, my teacher in Las Vegas. And now he moved over there, Master Tati. And then now I'm training with one, one of the teachers right now that uh, mentally. And next year, I'm actually going over there to, to train with him with Master Woody. So he, he was really big Muay Thai there. But, mm. but I feel like, you know, as, as a sport, I feel there's so many sports out there. And I, I feel like, you know, uh, as karate, kicks, punch. We all similar style. It's just different way of who brought it up, you know, a certain way. You know, it's almost like um, if you go Mexican food or American food, they all have rice and bean into it, you know, pasta. But depend who making it, you know. So I, I, I feel like this, this sport, I hope that one day, all the sports come together and have a big tournament and everybody, you know, after the tournament, everybody have a cookout and just have fun with it, talk, you know? That sounds awesome. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping one yeah. thing. So I, 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 we're, we're certainly getting closer. I don't think we're getting further, but right. I, I do believe we're getting closer to that. And I hope that we'll get there soon. Cause I, I want to, I want to see it. I don't know if I want to say it's uncommon. I think I can say that it's not terribly common for someone who is, training and, ha and has their own school to have several instructors and to really dedicate to their own training. But I'm starting to hear more and more martial artists that are doing both. They're teaching and they're training under others. And the training isn't an afterthought. 
Well, I, I think talk, talk I, about the importance of that. I think that the number one things that for me anyway, you know, you can't tell the student to keep training, knowing that you limit yourself. So, you know, for example, I remember back um, several of my friends, they go in some school and their teachers just like never really learned anymore. So they just like just stay where they are. And then the student went to hire their rank, whatever, you know, and then they just feel like they stopped. And I feel like for me, it's like, uh, yes, I have a, a martial arts gym, but at the same time, I still have to evolve, you know. I still have to learn. I still have to perfect my kick. I still have to, you know, and then the other things that why, you know, I train so many from so many different people is that to basically almost like a different uh, dictionary. For example, one person would say, well, no, you got to punch this way. The other person got to say punch this way. I have to be open minded because now I can't. I can't have a kid coming in and say, well, I, you know, for example, I have one person coming in. He can't really do um, balance. You know, his coordination is not really great. So I have to figure out the solution. So by that way, empower him instead of say, well, there's only one way. You know, so as an as instructor, for me, I always believe that you should share. It's almost like, you know, if I if I was having a table and have all my brothers come into a different style come over and we share ideas, so by that way we can perfect better, and then by that way we can empower other students come in to be better. You know, because end of the day is that I always believe. You know, for me is that the sport you can carry so far, but your mindset is stay where you are, then the sport cannot grow. Well said. Talk to us about your life outside of martial arts. We don't always get to hear that from people. What, what, what are you doing when you're not training? So for me, it was like spend time with my wife, my kids. And, you know, we, we do stuff like, for example, we go hiking, we go beach, we go, you know, we do like things that catching up fatherhood and being a husband. Because I feel like, you know, a lot of time people work, 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 and they forget their life itself. So for me, I always put it aside that I have time for my gym, I have time for a client, but I have to have time for my family because end of the day, if I don't spend time with my family, I always believe like this, is that you cannot grow as a person in, in, in love in the relationship because end of the day, you open a business, you have relationship with your client. And to me, I don't look at client. I look at there as... Um, partnership because every single one of them when they pay a membership they are basically own a timeshare in some way you know so i can be the guy who pay the bill but they are basically my partner so i have to make sure to treat them just like how i treat my wife my kid with respect with love and and, and share and i think like a lot of time um my business grow that way you know, so I can't say about other people, but my business grew that way. So that's why no matter what, I always have time for my wife, my kid, and away from business. Because I can't go hang out with my wife talking about business. I can't hang out with my kid talking about my business because my kid doesn't want to hear it. You know, so I have to make sure no matter what, I have to be present with, with my family. And that's what I do. I don't really, that's, that's what my joy, my love and joy. You know, I don't really need to do anything outside without them, you know. And I feel like, you know, this life for me is fulfilled by just that, that need. If you could train with any martial artist, somebody you haven't, anywhere in the world, anywhere in time, who would you train with? I would say Bruce Lee. Why? Well, you know, um, he was actually the one that I was looking up to as a mentor at that time because when I went to school, I got picked on and I was basically stood up on my own because of Bruce Lee, who I watched the movie, was how he portrayed himself. And, and, um, and the other guy, I would say the Godfather. Hmm. You know, um, because when I was growing up, Bruce Lee and Godfather, I was watching a lot. It was about 
uh, for me it was about how to challenge myself, creativity, and knowing that loving, loving everything I do. And I think Bruce Lee does that. Bruce Lee, he does everything. He talk about it and he live by it. And you know, so so I would say that's a person. Do you have a favorite Bruce Lee movie? I do. End of the Dragon. And I'm curious, we've talked about this before on the show. My theory, was that the first Bruce Lee movie you saw? That was the first movie I saw, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, it, it's always the first one. Yeah. Whatever the first one was, <laughs> that's the one. That's yeah. That's the one. Yeah. And what about, what about today's movies? You, you watch any more modern martial arts movies? Today, today movie, I do. I watch a lot. Of it and I would, uh, The other person that I, I have uh, cross path but I never really like, you know, hang out or anything like that. I would say uh, Donnie Yen. He yeah. just, he, He's awesome. Yeah, amazing. So, Let's talk about the future. We've talked about today. We've talked about yesterday. You're still training hard. You're, you still have stuff it looks like you're, you're working towards. So what are those things? What are your goals? Uh, my goal is next year I like to go back to competing. So that's what I've been training right now. I'm mentally doing that and i like to do one of the uh body build show next year hmm. so i want to uh, compete several martial arts and then uh, uh body build show just just uh for me because like i said growing up you know bruce lee godfather and then of course uh for me arnold was the big influence for me too it seems we're we're about to have a resurgence in in bodybuilding just you know, it's a it's something that I, I follow casually, just based on everything that I'm I'm hearing. I think we're we're seeing a new a new wave. Yeah, I I think yeah, I think like right now a big things uh, body built show is very big right now, and even like there's a lot of my fun that into it. I just it just like looking back to me, I I was growing up. Um, I remember uh, Conan was like one of the movie that. You know, I have collection on, and then uh, the commando. You know, that was really big for me. So it's like, oh, growing up, I always watched that, and I said to myself, one day I'm gonna step stand on the stage for that. So, and then you know, now my kid, you know, they they remind me. They're like, hey, you know, I would love to see you like be more strong and fit. You know, so now I I'm training very hard for that. And I know that you've got a book, so let's let's take a moment. Let's talk about that book. Tell us, tell us why. Well, I mean, writing. Right. Let's start there. Writing a book is not easy. No. So why did you want to write a book? So uh, my wife actually challenged me because she she uh, I have like a bunch of notes, and then she challenged me. She said, "Why don't why don't you put that into actions?" And I'm always have a big fear of writing the book, knowing that the uh, Verb and now doesn't line up right. So what happened was I, I did that everything together and then we hired an editor to actually put that together, make sure I edited it right and then put it into actions. And when I wrote that book, all my mind was, number one was to prove my English teacher that I can write. Number two was one of those things that I said to myself, I said, God forbid if I die, people don't really know what martial artists or people don't really understand why I teach a martial arts, what the lineup, what the concept of it. And then so because of that, my wife challenged me. So we put in that together. And when I wrote that book, it was took me six months. And then when I hire edited, it was like total was about uh, eight months total together. And then it was uh, when they released that book, it was amazing because I always grown up looking at Bruce Lee and then it was so funny that my book was on the first lineup before Bruce Lee. So, uh, so I actually took a big picture on in Amazon when I, they saw that book was the bestseller and then my book wow. and then Bruce Lee was second. So that was awesome. So I actually framed cool. that. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, what an honor. Nice. And we're, we're, well, we didn't really talk about what's in it. Let's, let's talk about that. What's in the book? So the book was a uh, 13 chapter and it was about when you step on the mat. And the reason why I said step on the mat 
because no matter what in America now, everywhere you go, you always see a mat, either the mat at the front door, back door, inside the house. So it's, it's remind people as a martial artist, that's what we do. So for example, the concept of the, the, the lineup of the classes, the way how I teach the class, it basically we do, we bow in when we come to inside training, training mat. And then we do, we bow in and then we do uh, warm up. We do meditation warm up and we do drill and then we do partner drill and then we do sparring and then we do form, we do weapon and then we're competing. So that's all the chapter, total uh, 13 chapter. But it's just the concept of how I was living my life as, as a martial artist because back then when I came to uh, United States, when I meeting people, so in my culture, as an Asian culture, you bow a lot, you don't hug, you don't hold hand, you don't shake hand. Uh, as I know when I was a kid, so growing up, you know, it's like we don't hug, we just bow. So, you know, so we bow in the mat. So for me, bow. The, the biggest thing was greeting. So in my culture, bow work, acknowledge the other person, greeting the other person. So in America, you bow, you can shake hand, you can hug, that greeting to a person. And then the other part, the big step was the warm up. Warm up is, for example, me and you, I come into a mat, I bow, I know that I'm gonna train. However, I see you, so I'm gonna bow to you, I greet you because you are either my partner, my teammate, or, you know, or my instructor. So I bow and then I ask you a question. That's warm up. That's for me about communications. So martial art is about that too. And so those process into the class is the same thing how you live uh, my life. So, you know, I bow the person, I greet the person, I warm up, talk to the person and get to know the person. And it basically about integrity, connections, with myself, with the other person, or with myself itself, okay? If I was training on a mat with me, just me, then I do the same thing. I bow, acknowledge myself or what's going on, what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna do the warm up, and then I'm gonna do drill, and then I'm gonna do stretching, and then I'm gonna do basically basic, you know, and then basic is just punch and kick, but in here, or if I was talking to a person, same thing as basic is about common, you know, hi, how are you, stuff like that throughout the day. So by that way, the connection between me and the other person or the connection between me and myself throwing the punch. And then, you know, so those are the concepts that I was learning on the mat, teaching on the mat, and I want to transfer to the, the sheet of paper so by that way people can read it and they can relate it, not just use martial art, but can do anything with their other sport, you know. And you mentioned people can find it on Amazon, anywhere else? Yeah, they can find it on Amazon. Great. And of course, we're going to have links to that. You sent over some stuff, so we'll make sure that we have links. I appreciate that. And, show notes. and you know, so I think like the, the I'm hoping the book is, is my goal is basically just sharing the concept up and then people can understand the martial arts so by that way they don't feel like wow it's too hard because i can you know as a martial artist there's a lot of people misconcept of the martial art so by that way they don't want to come and train you know because a lot of time now people watching uh, the mma or whatever they feel like everybody just come in and punch each other you know <laughs> Right. And, and but it's not about that. You you and I both know that it's not about that. And other people who train in martial art know not about that. And you know, for example, I have the the class that I have one guy that he's came in and he said to me, he said, you know, I just don't want to be the person that feels stupid, or I don't want to be the person that got punched, you know. And you know, and he's basically just normal person. And I said to him, I said. You know, you have the opportunity as a martial artist, you can train and then when come to a section of, let's say, sparring, you feel like, hey, you know, you don't trust the other person. We as instructor to make sure match you right. And if you still feel not uh, sure of sparring, we have other things for you to do. So by that way, to empower you. So in the future, you say like, well, I want to spot because I don't, you know, that's the other thing going back to you were talking about like the teaching now, now is that not a lot of people want to fight 
everybody want to train like a fighter, but not a lot of people want to get hit. And that's why, like, you know, as a martial artist, you know, uh, the, my book is just to make sure that everybody's seen the, the sport and then they can challenge themselves or they don't. However, whatever they choose in or choose out, they have to understand, hey, nothing wrong with learning and get when you're ready and then you can spot. Now, if people want to find you on social media or websites or anything like that, where would they go? They can go on uh, ExtremeNinja.com with no uh, E in fun, or they can go on StepOnTheMat.com. And of course, we'll, we'll link those, as I said. This has been great. And I'm going to ask you to send us out in the, the very traditional martial arts radio way. What parting words or advice or wisdom or whatever you want to throw at the listeners would you give today? I would say there's a, there's a phrase that I said all the time over here. I said, don't get frustrations, get inspirations, you know? And I just want, I hope that everybody out there uh, know how I feel about a sport. And I hope everyone take the opportunity to learn the sport, you know, not, not to be a fighter, but you know, to me, I think everyone in our life, we fight every single day. We fight to wake up in the morning. We fight the alarm. We fight the, the traffic. So I think as everybody as they fight as a person live through their life. So I would love to see one day, see everybody train and make the sport grow. And I want to thank you everybody for that. I think Shihan Wynn's story exemplifies that there are bumps in the road. It doesn't matter where we start or what we do or where we're going. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be things that we have to reconsider. Nothing is forever and nothing's guaranteed. But if you work hard enough, we all have that opportunity to put the pieces in place and move forward with the life that we want. And that's what I heard today from Shihan. So thank you so much, sir. I appreciate your support. Thank you for coming on the show. If you want to learn more about the book, about the man, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check out the show notes. And we've got links over there and a whole bunch more. Every episode we've ever done is there for free with transcripts and videos and tons of stuff. If you go to whistlekick.com, don't forget the code podcast15 saves you 15% on everything in the store. And there's a lot more over there. It's not just a store. There's tons of stuff available for you to check out. If you've got a suggestion for a guest, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, fill out the guest form. And if you have the inclination, if you'd like to give us some support, you can make a purchase. But of course, you can also... Leave us reviews, Facebook, Google, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever. And you can share this episode or maybe some of our social media content. We're at Whistlekick, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. If you want to email me, my personal email address, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's all I have for you now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.